Malaysia celebrates 65 years of independence in 2022, India would have attained 75 years of freedom from colonial rule. As we celebrate our respective struggle for freedom, we need to also celebrate values and aspirations shared in common between India and Malaysia with a view to preserving our common heritage. The quest to preserve our common heritage is the concern of the Malaysia India Heritage Group. Dato Ramesh Kodamal, who is our speaker for today, affirms and restates this aspiration in a context that he is familiar with, that is, the economic relationship not just between India and Malaysia, but also between India and ASEAN as a whole. Dato Ramesh is chairman of the ASEAN India Business Council. He actively promotes the interests of the business community between ASEAN and India and has actively represented Malaysia in various international economic forums. Dato Ramesh personally believes in economic cooperation beyond politics and ideological barriers as the right approach for common regional prosperity, an approach that is equally relevant for the sustenance of our common heritage. Thank you. I'm Ramesh Padamal, co-chair of AIBC. I would like to share certain views which we have been having to see that how we can further work with India in the future. And in the past, I think we have been working very well to benefit from each other. Just to start off with, um, Malaysia's relationship with India has been very long from the pre-independence time. When India received its independence in 1947, Malaysia was still a British colony. And Malaysia received its independence in 1957. And since our independence days, then Malaya was actually working very closely with India. And our first Prime Minister, Honourable Tunku Abdul Rahman, was a very close friend of Pandaji Jawaharlal Nehru. This proves that Malaysia and India had their relationships from early independence. But before that, as you all know, that uh, India and Malaysia, especially Malacca, was a trading hub for Indian merchants to come and exchange their goods through the Straits of Malacca. So there's a long story to say that and to prove that India-Malaysia relationship has always been there. We are the fourth largest Indian diaspora in the world. We have got about 2.8 million Indians here. This clearly proves that our connection, our links with India and Malaya and Malaysia has been there. And we have got a wonderful relationship. All our past, most of them, our prime ministers, have visited India. Reciprocally, Indian presidents, prime ministers have been here. So it has actually enhanced our relationship. And it has motivated the people of India and Malaysia for their links together. If you look at us around, we have so much of resemblance with India. Our religious groups are the same, like you have the Muslim population in Malaysia. You have a very huge Muslim population in India. The Hindu population is here, the Buddhist population is here. We different races in Malaysia actually have the same culture and religious norms as India. So, just to stress a point that Malaysia and India relationship is here for a very, very long time and is to stay here. And we have progressed further with India. Malaysia was a member who became a member of ASEAN in 1967 together with Singapore, Indonesia, Burma, Thailand, Philippines. So basically speaking, we have been working together to form this ASEAN group. And this ASEAN group comprising today of 10 members, later in we had Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia and Myanmar joining in. It became a group of 10 nations. I represent the ASEAN India Business Council, which plays a very important role 
to see that how the businesses from ASEAN can link with India. And I'm happy to say that the ASEAN-India relationship has grown leaps and bounds. When we first started off with India under the ASEAN platform, trade was very minimal. It was hardly about 10 or 15 billion dollars. Today we are touching a figure of close to 100 billion. We were expecting to move to more than 150 billion, but unfortunately, the world knows that due to the unforeseen situation of the COVID pandemic, it has slowed down. But still, our figures have improved very much. In ASEAN, all the 10 countries work very closely with India. Singapore, Indonesia, which has got the largest population in ASEAN, close to 260 million, is also working very closely with ASEAN. Singapore, the financial center, has got a lot of investment from India which has come in. We have got seven Indian banks who are registered in Singapore. That clearly proves that India has actually worked towards ASEAN with its investments. And we can also see that not only uh, India has moved to Singapore, in Malaysia, we have a lot of Indian companies here for investments. So this clearly proves that Indian investors are actually moving towards ASEAN and ASEAN investors are also moving to India. We have got a lot of Singapore companies, companies from Malaysia, companies from Indonesia who have taken and moved forward for their investments in India. We see a very great hope for this ASEAN-India relationship. It's going to be almost 30 years that our relationship has moved forward. We have signed our free trade agreement, FTA with India, and now we have the ASEAN-India free trade agreement which has been renewed. We hope with the renewal of this agreement, we will be able to enhance our trade further. All sectors have been opened up slowly for us to move into from ASEAN and from India. We believe and we understand that India has got a huge domestic market. India is also there to safeguard the interests of their industries. So India is very careful in opening up its markets. But at the same time, we in ASEAN believe that there's a great opportunity given to ASEAN if India opens up its markets. Because we as businessmen have to work economically to see how best we can service this group of people in ASEAN and India where commerce is concerned. We were a little unfortunate, although that India moved out of RCEP. But nevertheless, the ASEAN-India Free Trade Agreement, which has been renewed, will enhance further trade between ASEAN and India. AIBC has played a very prominent role to work on to see that this is achieved because we want the relationship with ASEAN and India to move to greater heights. As I've always said, that ASEAN is center of a bird and this bird has got two wings and these two wings are India and China. For this bird to fly to greater heights, we need both the wings to support us and take us to heights. We cannot ignore India at any point of time because we understand, we know that it is a very important and huge market for us. And in the same time, we believe that India also knows that ASEAN is a wonderful market for them with 630 million people. And the middle income group in ASEAN is a very strong group as a market. So I think we all have realized it, we all are working together and we want to work more closely to take us to greater heights. The government of India has played a very prominent role in looking at the ASEAN market. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's 
vision to look east, the look east policy on the northeast of India to link with the ASEAN boundaries is a fantastic idea. India is a boundary with Myanmar and other ASEAN countries, the CMLV countries. The CMLV countries are just by the side of India and there's a great opportunity of us linking together with the Look East policy. The Indian government has allocated billions of dollars to see that trade can be enhanced here. And for us, we from the ASEAN side are very positive for good things to happen. And I will also like to share a thought that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit in 2015 in Kuala Lumpur has enhanced our relationship further for Malaysia. We felt that it was very important for a leader like him to come up here and to assure us that ASEAN is a country which India wants to work with. He mentioned this at the ASEAN summit, which motivated a lot of ASEAN investors to see that how we can work further with India. And we also are working with all the Indian companies from India to tell them that please come and work with us here. We need a lot of expertise from India, which India has got. India has a lot of expertise which they can share with us. We need it. The pharmaceutical industry in India is huge and we need their support. The tourism India industry in ASEAN and India is huge. We need to share our views on how to take this to a different level. We also have now the digital infrastructure which has been created. We can share and move on. Malaysia and ASEAN countries are good in infrastructure and India has got a big potential for developing its infrastructure and I think the ASEAN companies can play a major role in helping this out. All this can only happen if the businesses are informed of what is happening at the ground level and how they can be linked with each other and what are the government policies which we are having. And this is what the role of AIBC is. What we do is we meet with the ASEAN economic ministers together with the Indian minister to voice out our views on where we can improve ourselves. We present to them reports from various industries who have got their problems highlighting the issues. And we have been very successful and I'm very sure that the ministers who are at these meetings really understand the problem of the businesses who are in ASEAN and in India. We need to clear a clear passage. We need to open up our market to a level that businesses do not have any hindrance in doing business. I think the policies laid out by India are very clear and the policies from ASEAN are very clear. There are no restrictions, but still, we have to improve it to see where we can further open our doors. We understand India's views. As I said earlier, it has got a huge domestic market. It has to protect the local industries, And we are aware of that. But at the same time, it is an opportunity for ASEAN to work closely with India to improve on both sides. At this point of time, I think uh, there's a very important role actually played by all the ambassadors and high commissioners in ASEAN. They have played a very important role to see that this happens. And our ambassadors and high commissioners who are based in Delhi too play a very important role. AIBC has been linking with all the ambassadors and high commissioners, particularly I based in Malaysia where the ASEAN India Secretariat is. I feel that the high commission in Kuala Lumpur have played a very important role to see this happen. All the past High Commissioners who have been here, which I had been having linked from Mr. Chatwal's time, Mr. Nambiar's time, we had Mr. Saha here, Veena Shikri, Mr. Ashok Gokhale, Mr. Ashok Kanta, the last Mr. Trumurtiji, who is in the United Nations now, and the present High Commissioner, Mr. Midrul Kumar. 
have been very, very helpful. They have always assisted all of us to see that whatever is required from us has been forwarded to India for the approvals. And I think it's a fantastic job. Without the help of the ambassadors and high commissioners, a counter like AIBC would not be very effective. And with our ambassadors in Delhi who have been responding to our calls to work out things for us from that side, have been very helpful. So I think the government of ASEAN, the government of India have played a very important role in seeing that the ASEAN-India relationship becomes a great reality. And I'm very sure we have got a long way to go, but with the long way ahead, we have got a fantastic progress which is going to happen. And I'm very sure that we all together will work to see this happen. AIBC, the ASEAN India Business Council, has always played a very important role because it was formed for this purpose in 2005. And since now, we have played a very active role to see that the trade between India and ASEAN moves forward and if there are any problems sorted out by any businessman, we are here to highlight out to the government and we are able to resolve it amicably and move forward. I would also like to thank the High Commissioner, Mr. Medrul Kumar, for his support and help given to the ASEAN India Business Council and also to Malaysia India Heritage for taking this opportunity to hear our views and passing it forward. Once again, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh. We share your optimism that India-ASEAN ties will emerge significantly stronger in the post-pandemic era. In the case of India-Malaysia ties, we need to forge deeper and stronger connections in the present and thereby realize our dreams of a shared destiny in areas affecting our common well-being for which our respective history and heritage have been preparing us over the past few centuries. Let us look forward to major achievements that we could all be proud of. As we enter an important phase in the post-pandemic era to celebrate 75 years of Indian independence and 65 years of Verdeka. Thank you once again.